This is Kathakali, the unique dance drama of Malabar. Kathakali is a highly developed pantomime depicting stories from Hindu mythology in which the gods and other legendary heroes come to life in all their splendor. But before we go into the real story of Kathakali, let us introduce you to the land and its people. In the extreme southwest of India, cradled between the Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea, is the land of Malabar, now more popularly known as Kerala. Skirted by languid backwaters and fringed for miles with coconut plantations, its western coast presents a panorama of verdant splendor. This lovely land, over which nature has thrown a lush green mantle of enchantment, is the home of a people whose pattern of life largely follows an ancient traditional order, which is evolved out of the fusion of two great historical cultures, the Dravidian and the Aryan. Depending mainly on the bounty of Mother Earth, the first sheaves of paddy are accepted with reverence as a divine gift and brought home with a sacred ritual of thanksgiving. This occasion is the symbol of peace and plenty. And in the leisurely days that follow, the people express their sense of beauty and joy through age-old dances and dramas, which are the products of a great traditional culture. Unique rituals, customs, ceremonies and festivals not only lend color and gaiety, but invest life with purpose and meaning. True to that pattern, the cultural and religious life of the people centers round the temples. Temple festivals are great events in the life of the people. The most spectacular and colorful event is the ceremonial procession of the gods, whose images are borne on richly caparisoned elephants in imposing array. It is the holy hour of sunset and the temples are aglow with countless lights. Inside, devout worshippers are taking part in rituals before the deity. Fitting finale come the great Kathakale dramas at night. The play begins with the lighting of the giant oil which burns brightly with its twin tongues of flame. This lamp is the only light and is the focal point of all action on the stage. There is no stage as such, 
It is just a part of the auditorium demarcated by the lamp. Here is a scene from the drama Daksha Yagam, or the sacrifice held by Daksha, one of the legendary progenitors of mankind. Proud Daksha defied Shiva, lord of the universe. This weird and towering figure agitating the curtain is Virabhadra, the terrible. Violent characters are introduced on the Kathakali stage in this dramatic way. Commanded by Shiva, he has come to destroy the impious and blaspheming Daksha. This is Daksha's sacrificial altar. The priests are engaged in ritual worship of the gods, all except Shiva. And here is Daksha, the reviler of Shiva. Suddenly, like a clap of thunder, Virabhadra's challenging battle cry is heard. Alarmed, Daksha, bow in hand, looks out for the enemy. Virabhadra, accompanied by Kali, another destroying emissary of Shiva, breaks into the scene in a hurricane of fury. The holy rites are interrupted. They spread terror and consternation. Infuriated and defiant, Daksha challenges them. The actors on the Kathakali stage do not speak. They only mime. Their gestures are more eloquent than words. In this way, they interpret the text of the drama sung by the nearby singers who recount episodes from mythology. Virabhadra demands Shiva's rightful share of the offering. Else, wicked one, the sacrifice and you too will be destroyed. Undaunted, growing still more defiant, Daksha thunders. I will not, to this wretched Shiva who haunts the burning grounds, I will not give. Virabhadra and Kali desecrate the sacrifice and demolish the altar. are soon locked in a relentless and deadly fight. The eternal conflict between right and might, between good and evil, light and darkness. The sword of Virabhadra severs arrogant Daksha's head and the forces of good emerge victorious. Acting such as this is no mere impersonation but an embodiment. The actor achieves this perfection after many years of rigorous training. Prostrating himself before his master, this young one enters the path of learning. In this dramatic art, where spoken word is excluded, the body of the actor is drilled into a perfect medium of expression. Physical exercises and massage with medicated oils ensure suppleness and grace and develop the capacity of the limbs for expressive body movements. In fact, every part of the body, legs, hands, neck, chin, brows and eyes have their separate exercises. These exercises commence in the early hours of the morning. In Kathakali, the eye movements are very important. Their function is to accentuate the meaning of the hand gestures. The eyes are drilled and made expressive. 
Hand gestures, known as mudras, are basically 24 in number. They are the alphabet of this language of gestures. By a process of permutation and combination, the mudras form a complete sign language capable of telling any story. The mudras are often descriptive and illustrative. This hand movement represents a fish swimming happily. Here, the actor's hands depict a lotus flower, budding and gradually opening petal by petal. This is the bee hovering over the flower and flying away. Now, here several mudras form a complete sentence. I desire to see this lovely damsel dancing. We shall now take a peep at the green room, where ordinary human beings are transformed into supernatural beings by an elaborate process of facial makeup, costume and ornamentation. The facial painting and the building up of the fantastic mask on the face of the actor very often takes four to five hours. While this is being done, the actor lies on his back and can even go to sleep. Then he slowly gets into the mood appropriate to the role for which he is being made up. To color the eyes red and make them distinctive, he applies a herbal product. The characters in a Kathakali drama are not so many individuals, but types that symbolize qualities and therefore are timeless and universal. This type, colored green in the face, is known as Pacha and represents beneficent characters. This one, where the green is broken up by a red pattern, is known as Kati. Aggressive, arrogant characters belong to this class. The red beard is one of the most impressive of the Kathakali makeups. It represents vile and vicious characters. Mythological characters like Hanuman are represented as white beards. Wearers of black beards are primitive dwellers of the forest. This is Narasimha, the man lion the very embodiment of all leonine majesty and ferocity. Each type is a symphony in color. While these strange preparations to usher in a super world are afoot in the deep silence of the green room, the show is announced at sunset to all the surrounding villages by a vigorous drumming known as Kali. This puts the people in a mood of expectancy and they soon get ready for the show. As each costume and ornament is put on, the new personality possesses the actor more and more. At last, with eyes fixed on the living flame of the lamp, and sunk in deep contemplation of the deity, he puts on the headgear, and with that, his transformation is complete. He no longer speaks. He is like one possessed. He walks with heavy, stamping steps, touching the ground with the outer edges of his feet, as if he were a visitor from another world. general of the army of monkeys who helped the epic hero Rama in his battle against Ravana, a story related in the ancient Indian epic Ramayana. The scene depicts Hanuman challenging Lava and Kusha. 
the two sons of Rama, who are living in exile in the forest with Sita, their mother. Lava and Kusha had challenged Rama's royal sway by capturing his horse, a symbol of his universal supremacy. Intrigued by the audacity of these two young and intrepid warriors, Hanuman provokes them by threats of punishment. Who, you adventurers, of deluded and of confused minds, who dare come here to challenge? The process of representation by gestures is somewhat elaborate. Every word of the text of the song, sung by the musicians, is rendered by the actor through hand gestures. These hand gestures are supported by other body movements and facial expressions, which aid in the process of conveying the meaning to the audience. talked of valor, you shall see destroyed now. you silly one, stay in the battlefield. Your words are sheer impudence. In the fight that ensues, the young warriors, Lava and Kusha, shower Hanuman with arrows. Finding them skilled and courageous in fight, Hanuman is pleased with these brave sons of his master. Failing fatigue, he falls down. He has a secret desire to see the exiled queen. Triumphant, Lava and Kusha make him captive and march him to their forest home. the banished queen of Rama. Her anxious eyes are searching the forest for her sons, Lava and Kusha. There they are, leading what looks like a giant monkey. Who can that be? Hanuman. Sita is surprised and sad as she recognizes Hanuman, the great and valiant general and her faithful devotee. Dearest ones, what have you done? What sacrilege is this? This is Hanuman, and venerable is he. Lava and Kusha instantly prostrate themselves before Hanuman, in awe and surprise, for they had heard that it was Hanuman who was able to find Sita, their mother, in her captivity in the demon king Ravana's abode in Lanka. Holding him captive is great sin. Free him, free him at once. And so Hanuman is freed. He salutes the queen. Hanuman is overjoyed at meeting the noble queen and the heroic sons of his master. 
Thus, all night long, this colorful pageant of dance and drama, a grand mingling of life and legend, goes on until its dream world of the epic heroes and their deeds of valor are dissolved in the advancing light of dawn, revealing the everyday world of reality, where nature, in all her enchantment, beckons man to fresh endeavors. <laughs>